Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn, and today I want to talk about YouTuber Cognitive Personality Theory, who has made what I believe might be the best INFJ video ever. Well, yes, we have a feeling function, and yes, we happen to have an F within this acronym that we've been assigned. But in reality, the INFJ is primarily an intellectual, a theorist, an analyzer. Yeah. Oftentimes, we're so engaged with our analysis that we can actually become completely oblivious to the emotions of other people. Yeah, that's true. We can become completely obsessed with finding a rational answer for something and become completely oblivious to the emotions of another person. And it does the INFJ is overall an intellectual who takes in emotional information from the world and attempts to condense it within a theory of everything. Yes. But generally, the INFJ is predisposed towards creating ideas, conceptualizing, theorizing, philosophizing, having an intellectual conversation with someone. Oftentimes, the INFJ is highly detached from their emotions. And sometimes when they're theorizing to a certain extent, they can become entirely detached from the emotions of the outer world. INFJs wear their emotions on their sleeve. We carry everything around us externalized. We don't hide emotions. We generally can't hide emotions. We're not even aware of the emotions that we need to hide. Generally, we will go completely unaware of our own emotions until someone passing by points out that we're feeling sad or we look happy. And then we're like, oh, am I? Great, that's awesome. Actually, now I think about it, maybe I'm happy. We don't have this vast private inner world. And generally, we're very open. In many ways, we're one of the most open out of all the 16 types. We tend to open up to other people, even if we're barely acquainted with them, about our vulnerabilities and about what we're going through because we don't even feel that vulnerable about them in the first place. It's not that we're not vulnerable, it's the fact that we're not consciously aware of the emotional connection to these issues. Therefore, the INFJ is simply not a mysterious personality type. If you want an example of a mysterious type, look at the INTJ, look at the INFP. Generally, the INFJ, especially when they've grown a confidence, feels very open. They feel very comfortable being vulnerable to people. They feel very comfortable even in a crowd of people, and even within a community, we still get on extremely well with our acquaintances. And as I was saying before, we're very open with people. The fact that we wear our emotions on our sleeves opens ourselves up to others and subsequently opens other people up to us. It develops very strong human relationships. And we love to explore various different intellectual topics. So as soon as someone can open up about something that we can glean some kind of intellectual analysis from, then great. We're suddenly on a roll. The INFJ is an extremely social creature. And out of all the types, especially in the modern age, we tend to feel less alone than others. You see, the thing is, before the INFJ became the universal term for introversion, which is a state 50% of the people on planet Earth inhabit, by the way, the INFJ was actually known as one of the most social out of all the introverted types. And at times, easily confused with an extrovert. Because when we're in a social situation, we can be very intense completely absorbed in the extroverted sensing, extroverted feeling moment. Introverted intuition is in fact a simply a wide lens looking internally. So you have a lens and then you direct it outwards. Therefore, the depth of the image becomes shallower. You direct the lens internally and then you view a wide scope of information which is comparatively more vague than say introverted sensing, which is a narrow scope lens. Therefore, someone of introverted intuition as their dominant function spends most of their time casting this lens internally, like I do. I like to view everything going on in my mind at once, at the expense of detail. This is the manner in which the function is abstract, and not because the function is tied to a reality beyond our own. But you see, the thing about introvert intuitive dominance, especially INFJs, because their function is connected to their introvert thinking framework of everything, these types cannot abide coincidences. If they see a coincidence, they will try to force it into their theory of everything because introverted intuition exists in order to make reality entirely predictable. It's a chain of patterns stored within the mind. Therefore, if anything breaks the pattern, if something is outside of the realm of introverted intuition predictive capabilities, something must be done about it. The framework must be adjusted in order to accommodate this coincidence because coincidences cannot exist within a completely introverted intuitive landscape. Honestly, I love this video and I love how it places the INFJ on an equal pairing to the remaining 15 personality types. We are not at the top of the hierarchy. We are not the best type. We are not the most unique type, the most rare. We are just one of the 16 personality types, interesting equally to any other personality type. 
I would argue against this video, however, on one point, and that is that INFJs in fact just as strong in feeling as they are in intuition. Our emotional life is just as important as our intuitive or intellectual. The problem is our desire to intellectualize our emotion. The tendency is that we experience and deal with our emotions all the time, but through intellectual means. We deal with and control our emotions through our judging function. We set emotional long-term goals rather than short-term emotional experiences. We don't recognize our present emotional state, like you said in this video, but we are acutely aware of where we want to go long-term, what emotions we want to experience, what kind of a world we want to live in, what kind of a utopia we seek to create. We have this ideal in our head, a long-term future that we are always in the pursuit of, but while we go there, we deny or ignore our personal experiences. We uh, say our own emotions are incongruent with our own long-term vision. We say that our personal feelings in the moment don't matter as much as our long-term emotional goals. We let go of negative feelings in the moment and pretend not to see or ignore our current emotional state so that we can work towards the long-term goal, which might be, for example, harmony in a conflict, or it might be a kind of agreement or a bridge, or something that will help us feel united to the rest of humanity. I think because the INFJ does such a hard job of trying to intellectualize their emotions, trying to control and rein them in, trying to direct them towards long-term emotional goals, we come to believe we don't have emotions. We believe that we have gotten rid of any inconvenient, spontaneous expressions of anger or anxiety or stress in any situation. We believe that we can let go and stand above all these things and choose to do what is best long term. We believe that we can pretend not to see or notice our own emotional state or what we are feeling. And we believe even more that it's unimportant that uh, our long-term goals are simply more important than our emotional feelings in a moment. And so we believe we're not feeling types, but in fact we are. Our theories focus on humanitarian issues and on feelings and our own dish issues. We directly deal with and constantly work to overcome our negative feelings. And we work through them slowly and theoretically. We try our best to analyze them. We try our best to explain them. And we hope that by explaining them, we will become, we'll learn to stand above them. We'll learn to overcome them. We'll learn to reach the uh, long-term emotional goal that we always wanted. When I was young, I went through this quick phase in my life where I thought to myself, I don't actually have emotions. But when I grew older, I realized actually I have a lot of emotions. The problem is I constantly try to intellectualize and make these emotions global and generic to every single human being. I constantly expect and try to relate my emotions to what everyone else is feeling. I'm so concerned with the global human dilemma that I make no room for my own personal experiences or issues. And today I can't really deny the... <laughs> importance that my feelings have on my work and what I'm doing and who I am and my theories as a whole. Anyways, I deeply recommend all of you to go check out Cognitive Personality Theory and his new original viewpoints on INFJ and on the different personality types. It's really refreshing to hear people innovate and come up with these new theories and additions to typology and I really feel impressed by what he's done so far.